Welcome to my channel. I'm Venus from Hearts Desire by Venus and today I'm going to take you through how to make a journal cover or a memory book cover um, or a mini album cover. It's all basically the same, at least when I do it it is. I'm working on a couple of custom orders, um, a couple of wedding books and a dragonfly book. So I thought today I would just take you through while I am, oops, hit the camera, while I am doing this. So in my case, uh, this is the size of my covers here. Um, can't see if I can get you all in the zone here. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, my covers for these particular books are 10 by six and a quarter. My spine is obviously 10 by uh, two and a half inch uh, spine. So I've got a front and a back and my spine piece. Um, I also have some Tyvek. Now this I got at my um, local stationery store. They're Tyvek envelopes and they come their legal size and it's this thin white Tyvek. I bought a box of them, oh God, years ago and I'm still working my way through them, but I cut them open because a single layer works perfect for uh, reinforcing my spines. So what I've done is, is I've cut it the same width as, sorry, same height as my spine, but given it an inch and a half on either side so that when you put this in the cover, um, this will help strengthen uh, your covers and your paper there while you're doing the opening and closing all the time. So I'm just going to dive right in. I'll move the covers. So I start with the spine and I do a combination of tape, two sides of tape and glue. So if you've been following my videos before, you know why I do this. I like the instant gratification of the tape, but I like the uh, longevity of the glue. I find giving them both uh, it seems to just work for me. Uh, it's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, but if you're doing it this way, I like to tape all four sides. And then I do a good one down the middle. Now, if you had wider tape, you could most certainly use that. This one is, oh, uh, what have I got here? This is uh, it's about three three-eighths inch tape. So I'm just going to peel the tape backing off. Of course I can't, got no fingernails left. I've been out gardening for the last week, getting my yard all prettied up and uh, I have managed to break every single fingernail. Not that I ever have really long ones anyways. Uh, but I did manage to break every single fingernail I've got. So I definitely need my uh, pokey stick. And I'm just going to put my bead of wet glue. Now the same principle works no matter what size covers and spines you're doing. Um, it's totally up to you. This just happens to be what I'm doing for these custom orders. Uh, so I'm just going to center it like I said. I want about an inch and a half on either side. Um, now here's, this is totally, I don't know anybody else does this, but I like to have my cover spaced off about a quarter of an inch um, from here to here in that spine so that when you open and close your book, it's got some flexibility. Now I could probably just draw a line a quarter of an inch, but I'm kind of lazy. Now, all I do is I run a strip of my quarter inch two-sided tape down there um, on either side. And then I just burnish it in there good because I do peel it up later and it helps my cover stick. But this is also my marker. Um, so it just helps me. Totally up to you. So now what I'm going to do is now that I've got my spine piece here covered, as you can see, it's all, all done. I'm going to take my two covers. Um, actually, forget it. I forgot. I got to put a piece of tape on the edge of each side here. 
of the Tyvek. I almost got ahead of myself. Now I'm going to set it aside. So on the cover, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a piece of two-sided tape on one side and on the other piece, same thing. And then what I'm going to do, just make sure this is burnished down well, use my pokey stick and get the tape off. I'm going to just do the one side. And what I'm going to do is between the tape I peeled off and that quarter inch marking tape I've got, I am going to run my glue. So one cover now, I'm going to peel off that two-sided sticky tape. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to line it up with that quarter inch marking tape, getting it all settled as you can see there. And then I'm going to just burnish it in. And I'm just going to flip it over and get it all in there nice and smooth. Okay, so that is that side. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other flap here. Get my tape off, my two sided glue. Or two-sided glue. <laughs> I guess all glue is two-sided glue. <laughs> Ooh, boy, oh boy. I was out weeding in the garden. I think maybe I got a little too much sun. All right, so I'm going to line this up again, nice and straight, matching all ends, using my uh, quarter-inch marking tape there. Flip it over, get it in. So there you can see... This is the basis of my cover. So now what I do is Tyvek side facing up because this is going to be the outside cover. So when I'm looking at my book before I cover it, this is what you would see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my two-sided tape all the way around all four edges. Get it all taped up there nice I'm sure this is not all getting on screen but you're getting the gist of it here all right and then what I do is I run on you can feel your your spine here you can see your quarter inch marking tape right in there it's kind of showing through the gap I run a piece of tape right over that I run it over the next side too one down the middle of the spine and then one where the Tyvek meets the cover and then just one in the middle. And again, I'm still going to use some uh, glue, but these are just my key points that I like to get my tape on to hold it smooth while the glue is drying. Again, make sure your tape is adhered. Just a little added step to make sure. Okay, so now I have got that. So the paper that I'm going to use to cover this, I've got uh, some of this paper. I'll put a link below uh, for the company that I used for this one. It's actually a digital print. Um, I just found her. Um, I can't remember her name offhand, but I will definitely put it in down there. I was just going through my paper collections and seeing what I had. So I'm using eight and a half. By 11 inch paper now that's obviously as you can see not a whole lot bigger than my book and I'm covering my front covers the same with this and this and then I will cover a spine piece separate so what I like to do is kind of just measure here mark so I'm going to remove the tape on here so I'm just going to get my pokey tool in and I'm going to do one side at a time here. So I'm just pulling my tape and I'm just rolling it back, but leaving it attached the uh, wax paper part because I'm not taking this whole part off because obviously this piece is only going part way, part way on the other side and I'll be doing the spine piece separate. So I'm just going to uncover the parts that I actually need right now. And then I'm going to get my glue in there. 
I'm going to give it a good working. Um, so to make sure whatever glue you're using, it's up to you, but I prefer to use a non-water-based glue because it doesn't warp my paper in here. So that's why I use that. Uh, it's a little stinky, but uh, it is what it is. So what I need to do is slide my cover over. This is the piece I'm going to use for my uh, front cover. I'm going to lay it cover side down. I'm going to flip my paper over. Now you want to make sure that you kind of center this. Um, so you want it to go, as you can see, I'm about an inch and a half over the spine. I've got about an inch and a half on the one side of the cover and I'm centering it up and down. That'll be enough to fold everything over. So I'm just going to smooth it down and I'm going to flip it over this way. And now you can see I didn't peel those tapes, that tape all the way. Um, and I'm going to just do that right now. So there. And then what I'm going to do is just to secure. I know I'm going to be putting a cover spine over this, but I'm just going to give it a little extra shot of my glue while I've got this exposed because then once I put my my spine cover on you're, you're not going to get at it again okay so now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so I'm just going to peel my tape back here get all my tape off And on this side and I'm just going to leave this absolute middle piece because that's from my spine part because I remember I'm doing the back cover right now lots of glue and same thing I'm going to move that out of the way yeah, this was a misprint color here. So this is the page I'm using, but I had a misprint. I ran out of ink and it wasn't printing true color. So I'm just going to save that and use it. So same thing on this side. We're going to make sure we've got a little bit over the spine, about an inch and a half here, centered this way, this way. I mean, I'm not quite matching up with the other one, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to have uh, my spine piece covering anyways. So you can see now I've got my two pieces on here. And again, for this little piece here, actually I'm going to just throw in, it folds back, so I'm just going to throw in a little piece of two-sided tape just on the edge here. And I think actually the other one's secure. I don't have to worry about it. Ooh, that's why I use my pokey tool. Get my pokey tool in and I'm just going to use my glue right here get that on perfect so that's all good there so now I have left to do is my spine piece so let me just make sure here I said my spine was two and a half inches and I like to go a little bit an inch and a half over each side so I'm gonna cut my spine piece is gonna be the 11 inches and then I'm gonna cut by six inches so 11 by 6 to do my spine and I'm just gonna move this out of the way now when I do the spine piece because you remember it's gonna overlap all the pieces on the top so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to two-sided tape all the way around all four sides. And I'm going to put a couple of strips down the middle. All right. Get that stuck on really well. Peel my tape back. Let's get this going here. Oh, you can hear my washing machine. It's done its cycle. It's singing. 
I love it. My my washing machine and my dryer all sing when they're done. Drives my husband crazy, but I love it. The little tune it makes. All right. So now we're going to glue again, especially the spine. I find you really want to make sure it's glued in place really well because it's going to be part flexing the most. So I'm being very generous with my glue. Okay, so now I'm going to take, oh, I stopped sticking to it. Okay, I'm going to lay that there. I'm going to take my book cover now. And I'm going to line up. So remember, you want it kind of in the middle of the piece you just had. Haha. -ha. Before you do it, remember to take down that middle piece of tape that we didn't do. That was a close one. Peel that up. All right, now we're good to flip it over. Center it in there and kind of straight the best you can. I think that is good. So there you can see. Now you could do a decorative edge on here. You could do fabric on it. But in this case, um, the cover is I'm uh, actually going to be double matting over. So it's only going to show bits on here. So this is how I wanted it to be. So now we're almost done. To finish this area, again, we are going to go all four sides of the cover on the chipboard side here. But when we get to the middle here, we want to peel up that quarter inch marking tape because when we seal our paper over here, it's we're going to make sure it gets right in that divot. Oh, even with my pokey tool, I'm having troubles today. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to line all the way around and make sure you get it down in that divot, across, down in that divot, and across. And all four sides. And again, down in the divot, across, down in that divot. It's just getting so you have no loose papers. And then what I do is I do the same thing on the outside edge of the paper cover here. So all the way around all four sides. Big long strip. And this is just gonna make sure that we don't get any peeling or uncurling once we uh, fold this over. Because nothing's worse than having a corner come up. So again, just go with your burnishing tool Make sure everything is stuck into place really well. You don't want to have to come back for that. All right. So then I'm going to use my two-sided mat. I have one of those little two-sided self-healing mats. And I have this. Um, this is it's called a Perfect Trim Ruler. Um, you can get it at perfecttrimruler.com. Um, I'll put the link for it below if I can find the link, but if not, I'll write the name of it. This does, as you can see, there's markings for different type of corners. So basically, I use the 0.25 um, inch corner here. I line it up with the little grid part you can see, and then that shows me the perfect spot to trim. Get my knife here. So you kind of hold it over there, and I'm lining it up on the edge of my cards, my uh, chipboard cover here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's lining up there. And then that leaves me this absolute perfect little part to cut off. And I do tape right up to it so that when I cut it, it's my uh, tape is absolutely in the corner where I want it to be. So I'm going to do that for all four sides. And it just gives you a perfect mitered corner. Because before this tool... I was never getting it quite right. And, you know, the corners, if you don't get them right, they look kind of yucky. That's the technical term, yucky. So I'm just going to get this going on here. Last one. All right. Put my mat away. Okay. So now we are ready 
to fold this over. So what I usually do is I take my burnishing tool. Well, first, I'm just going to take your fingers and I'm just going to run them along here to ease this corner up. Then I take, I have one of those flat edge burnishing tools and I'm basically just going to rub it right along the chipboard. This is just preempting the bend here so that I don't tear it or crack it. And I always start the long side, which is the top, and then I do the bottom. So what we're going to do here is again, we're going to peel tape back, but I'm only going to peel part way on the two sides because I'm not doing the side part yet. And then I'm just going to take the big long piece of tape, peel it back here off the chipboard, and I'm going to peel it off the paper that we're wrapping. And then I'm going to take my glue in that little crease that we just did. I am just going to run a bead of glue right down between the chipboard crack and the paper. So we fold it over. It's going to sit nice and smooth. And I start in the middle. And I use my tool and I'm just going to fold it over and burnish it really well. Just get it on there. Okay. And get in that little groove that we had there and just get it in there. And I just like to work it in. Okay. Now, here's where it's a little hard on this corner until the glue takes. So I just put a few clips to hold it right all along this mid spine here because this is the part you want the glue to dry on and forms a really good seal. I'm just going to get some more clips. These little clips are just uh, clever clips or little craft clips, but I do like them for securing until the glue holds. I'm going to put one more here. Now I will be matting over this later, so this edge will be covered, but I like to give it every chance I can right now. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're just going to take our fingers, just start that pre-bend, get it going. Take your uh, bone, boning folder or whatever you want to call these things. Give it another one and then now I'll peel off all the side tape here and peel it off the paper as well. Don't forget that bead of glue right down in the corner there. And again, we're going to fold it over. Now, if you were using um, 12 by 12 inch paper instead of eight and a half by 11, you'd have, you could see where you'd have a little bit more fold over but I don't have any and this works fine it just takes a little patience I find and I got patience so again we're just going to do all the clips in here just to hold it it's just a little thick over the spine because don't forget we had two pieces of cardstock overlapping so nothing a few clips in here while it dries I think I'm going to miss one on this side. Okay, so now we're going to do the short ends. And we are going to do exactly the same thing. But to start, we're going to dress these corners. So now at this point, you can see your corner is sticking out a little bit over here past your book. I take the flat edge here, and I basically I'm pushing this down and scooping it in there. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm pushing it up and scooping it in. So that when we do my finger fold here, you can see it's already tucked it in. You're going to burnish it again. Peel off our tape, which we already peeled this side off when we did the other part. Put some more glue in there and then start in the middle. Work your way out. And here's where I like the glue because you can get it right on that corner. And now you can see after I've tucked it in, that corner is a perfect corner. Between that tool and then the little tucking in here that you're going to do. Like I said, so you're just going to take it and I just kind of push it in towards the cover. 
And you know what? It may not seem make sense until you're doing it. And then you will actually understand totally what I'm talking about. Get this little piece of glue in here. Peel this part off. Center it in. And again, another perfect corner on either side. And at this point, you can see we have done our cover. Um, so usually what I do is I just give it a little, a little bend, form it into the book shape with the clips on so that it will hold its shape. So you can see there's the back, there's the front, and I will be double matting this. So a lot of this part you're not going to see, you'll see a little bit, but you'll have the perfect spine there. And that is how I do my covers. Now, depending on how you're going to do, if you're going to do a book uh, with hinges in here, you'd be putting your hinge mechanism over the top here, and then you'd be putting in your pages. If you're doing a journal, once this dries, I usually put a fabric cover, a fabric strip in here um, for me to stitch on, and I cover this. But there's, there's a couple of different ways. But when I get to the next part, I will show you the fins that I put in on here. Um, you can use the fins for doing memory books. Um, also, I use it when I'm doing a combo junk journal versus adding it. Like it's a hybrid junk journal and uh, mini album all in one. But I'm going to let that dry. I'm just going to grab my other one that I've already finished. So this is one of the other ones that I finished and has been drying. I've just got my tape on here just because I've put it a little bit wider on here. But you can see there's your cover. I inked it up. Got the nice spine front and back. So then we will move on to doing um, the insides for another video. Anyways, um, thanks for coming out and joining me. Uh, hopefully you're liking this. We're going to go straight through how I do a mini journal, mini album cover uh, beginning to end. So this was part one. Don't forget to hit that like up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Come on, people. I've hit over a thousand subscribers, but I could definitely use a few more. Um, if you are attempting this and you want to show me what you've done, please hop on over to my Facebook group, Hearts Desire by Venus. And uh, upload your pictures there. Show me what you're doing. Have a little bit of a chit chat. And hopefully you guys are having a great summer like me. And uh, I will see you again soon. Have a great day.